Ever felt like you could be doing something in Blender faster, but just don't know how to? In this video, I've got a bunch of tips that will help speed up your workflow in Blender instantly. And I guarantee that you probably don't know most of them. Pointing lights at a target one by one. Instead, select all of the lights that you want, hit Shift T and click wherever you want to point the lights to, and you'll get it done much faster. Trying to fix your messed up geometry? Try using Grid Fill as it got so much better in Blender 4.5. Start small and grow your selection while reapplying grid fill to easily fix geometry that would have taken ages to do manually. Obviously, it's not a catch-all, but you'd be surprised how well it works. An organized workspace is a fast workspace. In the properties panel, click on the top right dropdown and select only the tabs that you're actually using in your workflow for a cleaner and more functional workspace. Aligning an object to a surface can be really annoying sometimes. So instead of eyeballing it, enable base point snapping by pressing B when you're moving an object. Select your object's base point, you can click on any vertex and then just click wherever it needs to go. Simple as that. Need to lower the amount of geometry that an object has? Don't go wasting your money and time on add-ons. Try using Blender's built-in QuadriFlow remesher instead. You can find it under the Data Properties Remesh tab, set it to Quad and just hit QuadriFlow. Set your desired face count and let the magic happen. It's really, really good, especially for a free remesher. Want to cut a hole in an object? Blender's new carve tools make that super easy. Box carve will cut a rectangular hole, circle carve a round hole, and polyline carve a custom drawn hole. Each carver has several shape, array, and cutter options, and my favorite one is the array one, which allows you to cut an array of holes at the same time. It's super nice for creating details all around your model quite easily. Is your Blender running slow, especially on heavy scenes? In Blender 4.5, you can change the Blender Display Graphics backend, that's a mouthful, to Vulkan instead of OpenGL. This should increase the performance in your viewport, file loading, and many other smaller aspects on most hardware. For a full list of supported platforms, there's a link in the video description. Using the outliner to select all of the objects in your collection, you can select one of the objects in the viewport instead and just hit Shift G collection to quickly select all the objects in that same collection. This select group function, as what it's called, also has a ton more useful selection options, so it's a good shortcut to know. Are you trying to sell all that beautiful work that you're making in Blender? Today's video sponsor Odoo has a great solution to that. Odoo is an all-in-one management software with over 45 apps that help you run your business. Odoo allows you to easily launch your own e-commerce site directly through their dedicated app. Set up your online store for free in just a few easy steps. Odoo guides you through the entire process and a built-in AI will generate the structure of your e-commerce platform for you. You can then easily customize it to your liking and add blocks using the drag and drop system. Quickly create products from your site, just add a name, a price, and the product is created. Customize images, add information, and even change the layout on the fly. And then it just comes down to setting up your personal details, shipping methods, and preferred payment providers, and you're all set to start making your first sale. Odoo isn't just easy to use, but it also scales with you, allowing you to add more and more apps as your business expands and evolves. The first app is always 100% free for life, including unlimited hosting and support, and the e-commerce app also comes with a personalized domain free for one year. Make sure to check out Odoo through the link in the description, whether it's for selling your art, building your own website, or any of their other 45 business apps. Thank you to Odoo for sponsoring this video. Huge file sizes for your Blender project? Well, make sure they're not containing any unnecessary data by going to File, Cleanup, Purge Unused Data, and just deleting all the unused data. Be sure though that any non-used objects, textures, or materials that you do want to keep inside of your scene are set to fake user to prevent them from being deleted. Want one of those nice clean white renders? Don't go changing all your materials one by one. Instead, just go to View Layers Override and add a default white material as the material override to do it instantly. Want to see and control an object's animation path? Select your keyframed object, go to Object Properties, and click Update Path to get a line to visualize your animation, including keyframe time steps. Having a bunch of lights in different colors can make remembering which light does what kind of difficult when working in solid view. You could rename them, that would be a fix, but I know we're all lazy here, so instead just enable light colors in the viewport overlay to get light colors in solid view. 
Want an instant overview of every angle of your model? Press Ctrl-Alt-Q to get a quad view of your scene, including top, front, side, and perspective views. Press it again to go back to your regular view. In case you've been living under a rock, Blender now has access to the internet, allowing you to download any of the 500 plus free add-ons available on the extensions platform. Like for example, this incredible simple deform add-on that makes using it so much more intuitive and fun than the actual modifier. It's super nice and it's 100% free and I'll put a link to the extensions platform in the video description. If you want multiple camera angles in a single animation, in your timeline, press M wherever you want to add a camera switch. This will add in a marker, then select the camera you wish to link to this marker and press Ctrl B in the timeline to link it to the marker. And just like that, you get automated camera switches. Want easier control over your materials to improve reusability? In the shader editor, select your material nodes and press Ctrl G to group them. Now connect any input you want access to easily, like for example, these colors to the group input node and you're now able to change these on the fly in the material tab without having to change it to the shader editor. Whenever a function or tool in Blender has this icon, it means it comes with built-in preset options. For example, render settings has a final and preview option, cameras have a long list of professional camera brand setups, and even better, you can also save your own presets for these tools and settings. When rendering animations, getting a visible noise pattern that sticks to it results in a very CG and ugly look. To prevent this from happening, go to Render Properties, Render Advanced, and enable Use Animated Seed. It's this little clock icon. This will generate a new noise pattern for every frame, thus preventing that sticky noise look. When working with tileable textures and making changes to a model, having to redo the UV unwrap can become a pain. Instead, in edit mode, go to the tool panel and enable correct face attribute under the options to have the UVs auto-correct with any changes that you make. While we're on the topic of UVs, when unwrapping a complex model, it can be nice to get a life update to your UVs whenever you add or remove a UV seam. So again, in the tool panel, enable life unwrap to not have to manually unwrap after every change that you make. Alternatively to the end panel, you can also access the tool menu directly through the icon just above the render properties. It's this little wrench and screwdriver icon. Want to add a quick simulation or particle system to your project? The object menu offers a selection of quick effects, including a quick fur setup, quick liquid or smoke, and a quick explode simulation. Looking to create a simple soapy bubble material? Set your roughness to zero, IOR to one, transmission to one, and then in the thin film tab, set a thickness like 400 Newton meters and give it an IOR of 1.52. Super easy setup, creating those perfect iridescent soapy bubbles. Sending the transmission to zero, by the way, will give a very cool smoke caught in a bubble kind of look. If you're using Blender 4.5, you can now use all the procedural texture nodes in Blender's compositor, making it a lot easier and more flexible to introduce grain to your renders or add a ton of other flexibility and control in your compositing setups. If you want to set the color temperature of a light to get accurate lighting for a scene, you can enable and change the temperature of a light directly. Simply add in a Kelvin value that matches the light warmth or coolness you want and the color changes to match it. Common neutral light uses around 3500 to 4000 Kelvin, but you can go as low or high as you want. If you want to save a copy of your file so you can keep incremental versions of your project, you can hit Ctrl Alt S to quickly save an incremental copy of your scene. This is a great way to make quick versions of your scene as you progress in it, giving you sort of safe states like in a video game to go back to if you mess up down the line. Want to prevent the bevel modifier from beveling every edge on your model? Set the limit method to weight and in edit mode select all the edges you want to have that bevel, open up the end panel, item tab and under edge data give it a bevel weight of 1. Now it will only bevel those edges. Want to build complex cylindrical shapes like for example a chest piece? Add a curve and in front view build your shape. Now add a screw modifier and change the axis until you get the cylindrical shape that you want. You can now freely change the curve, add more points by subdividing it and create some really unique shapes very very quickly. 
Have a scene with lots of high poly objects and textures that's lagging your PC. The Simplify tab under the Render Properties allows you to quickly lower max subdivision levels, particle settings, and texture limits for your viewport and it renders. This is not only great for a much more responsive viewport, but also makes for a much quicker preview render for your entire scene. Talking about renders, if you want to make a quick render of your project but don't need to actually see the entire image, in the viewport you can simply press Ctrl B to select a render region. Blender will now only render this small part, making the render significantly faster. To clear it, just press Ctrl Alt B. When scaling, moving or rotating objects, you can exclude certain axes from the transformation by pressing Shift plus the axis that you want to exclude, in example Z, after starting the transformation. A great use case for this is moving an object along a surface by preventing Z-axis movement. Almost any value field in Blender takes mathematical operations as well as specific code functions called drivers. A great example of a really simple driver is to type in hashtag frame in a field. This will add the current frame as the value, effectively creating an animation that goes along as your animation progresses. You can then use those mathematical operations I just mentioned to make it go faster or slower by multiplying the frame count or dividing it. If you want to slide an edge along a surface, you press G twice. But to have that edge then be identical to one of the edges that you are going to slide it to, you can press E after pressing G twice. This will make sure the line now matches one of the edges on the side. If you want to flip it to match the other edge on the other side, you can press F after having pressed E to flip it. This is perfect for creating clean topology holding edges in subdivision modeling, for example. By adding a plane, subdividing it a bunch, adding a dynamic paint simulation set to canvas and waves, then taking another object and adding a dynamic paint brush simulation, you can create interactive water ripples super quickly. This also works awesomely well with a particle simulation, allowing for a great raindrop setup. Now, I'm assuming you loved all of these tips that I just gave you, but if you're looking for more, I have a bunch more tips videos right here that you can watch to learn more about everything you can do in Blender.